Welcome to the Celtic Way Sit Down. I'm Tony Haggerty at a Haggerty Ten on the Twitter handle, and the man on the other side of the screen needs no introduction to any Celtic supporter. It is the one and only John Hartson. John Hartson, give it up for John Hartson. I'm going to give it up for John Hartson anyway. Delighted that you can join me, John. And for those of you who don't know about John Hartson, check out this. 109 goals and 201 appearances in all competitions for Celtic. He's one of only 30 players to have scored more than 100 goals for Celtic. He was a UEFA Cup runner-up in 2003. He won three Scottish Premier League titles. He won two Scottish Cups. He won one League Cup. He got 51 caps for Wales and he scored 14 goals. He's known as Big Bad John. But if you know John Hartson at all, you know that he's anything but a wonderful fella. He's always been kind to myself in terms of being a journalist, uh, always amenable. And uh, nobody's more delighted to have John Hartson talk me through his five Celtic moments that made him. So welcome, John, and thank you so much for appearing on the, the briefing. Oh, you're very welcome, Tony. As I said, mate, we've always had a, a good understanding. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I could speak to press every single day. I could speak to <laughs> different people every single day. But there's only a couple that I'll go out of my way to speak to, mate. And, and you're certainly one of them, you know. Ah, um, really so this was really difficult to think of my five best moments at Celtic. I've, I've got so many. A couple yeah. of... Um, uh, a couple of moments as well, a few negatives in there, of course, missing the UEFA Cup final, having played yeah. 12 out of 13 games of, of that cup run, uh, missing the final, obviously. Uh, it was disappointing, of course, um, missing out to when we played Motherwell, of course, on, on that sort of Sunday, that yeah. helicopter Sunday. Um, one or two others as well, but in general, you know, 99% positive. Uh, my time at Celtic had a wonderful time, had a great rapport with the supporters, and um, you know, I, I love being there, I love being part of the team. It was a wonderful team, two great managers. Um, I've become good friends, Martin O'Neill, and of course, then Gordon Strachan. So, um, nothing but um, <laughs> great feelings. Really, a club that's really, really close to my heart and always will be, you know. So, I'll start off number five. Um, number five, yep. Go on, John. Number five, I scored a goal. I scored a winning goal against Rangers in the quarter final of, of the, I think it was either the Scottish Cup or might have been the League Cup. And it was one of those goals where I, I flicked the ball on earlier, earlier in the game for, for Chris Sutton. Me and Chris played up top. Um, and uh, Chris ran on and, and scored, uh, slid, scored a really good, uh, with a good half volley past Stefan Kloss, and then Rangers equalised, and uh, and I previously signed a new contract four or five days before that, a two-year extension to my current deal. Uh, Martin was almost waiting for me to come back from my, from my double back operation. I had two operations on my back. Um, and then they gave me a new deal. And uh, this was almost like a thank you for obviously giving me the deal. Um, and I remember Didier Gat going down the right-hand side and he crossed the ball and Chris almost flicked it to the outside of his foot. It's ran all the way to the back post and I've got inside big Marvin Andrews, which was difficult to get past the big man. You know? <laughs> and I just happened to just put my left foot. I happened to angle, angle my foot so sort of in the right direction and it bounced and it went over Stefan Kloss and it made it 2-1 in the game around about the 75th minute. Well, I'd normally been taken off by then. <laughs> but, um, and then I scored and uh, there was no way we were going to let Rangers in back from there. And I can remember scoring and my, my momentum almost took me to the, the far corner of, of yes. the ground, Celtic Park. I remember just standing there and just raising my arms like that. We we gone two one in front, um, and it was me and Chris as a partnership. Um, I think it might have been two thousand and four. Maybe Henrik had left by then. Um, hence, me and Chris Sutton played up top. Um, and I remember the celebrations. They, they were just you know spine <laughs> tingling stuff. Um, you know we don't we knock Rangers out of the cup, and then we had the opportunity to go on and, and obviously. Uh, do particularly well in that cup. So 
that was my number five. Uh, could be number one, but it's number five. <laughs> I remember um, the goal, John. I remember the celebrations after it. And I remember I did an article with you about it recently but when Celtic played Rangers mm-hmm. in the Cup and, and you spoke about that. And, you know, and people kind of look and think, why that? But it's special to you, isn't it? And and that's the thing. And, and the celebration showed it because you say it capped off a brilliant week for you. And yes. it capped off the thing about, you know, can can uh, Sutton and Hartson play together? Because it was always kind of Sutton and Larson or Hartson and, and Larson at the time, you know. And yeah, as you yeah. say, those goals, Sutton, you setting Sutton up and then Hart, uh, Sutton setting you up. That's right. That's an emphatic answer, isn't it? And it's it's kind of weight right. off your shoulders as well when you think about it. You know, it's, it's a kind of we can play together. Trust us on this one, uh, gaffer kind of thing, isn't it? You know. Well, yeah, I think Martin always said to me that if you could get, I think we've got 448 goals between us, Hartson, <laughs> Larson, Sutton. So between the three of us, we knew where the net was, you know. Um, and I think Martin always said um, that with the three of you in the team, you know, we have a better chance of getting goals and winning games. And um, he never hesitated, Martin, in putting me in. And Chris was so versatile. He was such a brilliant footballer. He could go. Centre forward, Chris was that was his best position, no doubt yeah. about that. But he was excellent in midfield, had that number ten, if you like, or he could cover ground, he could play centre back, he, he played centre half in, in previously. I think he was at Norwich, I think once or twice. And um, so Chris was very versatile, and I, I've got him a lot. I've got a lot to thank Chris for because he could have he could have said no. Well, I want to continue playing with Henrik. You know they'd. You know them two, the darlings of the crowd. They'd um, they'd scored sixty six goals between them. Uh, you know the opening year of Martin O'Neill's reign, uh, where they won the title. Um, Henrik got fifty three, and Chris got <laughs> <laughs> something like that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and I keep telling him that when we go out and we do functions and we speak together at dinners. He says a few things about me as well. Um, I bet he does. So, yeah, uh, and it was down to Chris, really, his, uh, his willingness to, to drop in and play in other areas. And it was once or twice, of course, when when myself and Chris played together. And um, I enjoyed playing with a big man because I always felt whenever I played with other strikers, I was always the one to go to the back post, to knock things down, to make goals for others. But when I was when I was playing with Chris... It was almost like I could I could play a different role because yeah. I had somebody to knock balls down for me, you know. Yeah. Um, and he was very um, he was very unselfish. He gave himself up for the team. He was that focal point that um, we should take care of the centre halves and you know let the other centre forward go in and and get all the glory if you like. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was one of the reasons why um, it worked so well. Really, I, because I of think the, those, his willingness I, to uh, to allow to allow the three of us to for him to change position, and I think that's why you three guys are held in such esteem, John, because it was just a moment in time, and you know you said that Sutton and Larson were a darlings, but I'd include yourself in that as well because Celtic supporters loved that triumvirate of players, loved that team, but yourselves in particular, you, you ringed off there that you scored four hundred and forty eight goals between the threes. I mean that's sensational. And I think most Celtic supporters would remember every one of those goals, John. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. that's well, just how in, encyclopedic yeah. uh, knowledge yeah, that yeah. they have of the club and of you kind of guys and why why they love you. And I think in recent memory, you know, I was saying recent memory, it's starting to head to like two decades ago, that kind of thing. And you think, wow, was it really that long when you guys were, you know, in your pomp and ceremony at Celtic Park? But I just think the that particular team just, that there was something different about that team. You went toe to toe with so many European heavyweights. You went toe to toe with arguably the greatest Rangers side on record, mm-hmm. and uh, and you never flinched. And you guys just, you know, you epitomised everything that was was great about Celtic Football Club and created your own memories and stories. And you know, which you'll never forget. That five years, just yeah. you said yourself, brilliant time at the football club. It was brilliant, and I would describe us as a team of men, Tony. We were a yeah. team of men, you know. We were all thirty, approaching thirty. I think our youngest player was Stan Petrov, who's twenty-six. You look at the back four. You had Rob Douglas, thirty-something. Didier Gatt, same. Um, Mialbi, Valharan, 
um, uh, uh, Tobo. Yeah. You know, um, and then you look at the midfield. You had Lenny. You you had um, Paul Lambert, a European Cup winner. Um, you had Stan Varger as well at the back. I'm taught, I'm naming all these names, but we're all thirty plus. <laughs> three, myself, Chris, Henry. Yeah. Most of us were senior players. Most of us were international footballers, and we knew how to we knew how to get it done. You know, we, yeah. we were never looking for answers. It was always a case of somebody would, um, if it wasn't working, we, we would change it straight away. Len, Lenny was terrific in the dressing room at pointing the finger and making sure that everyone mm. at the game. And we had many of little arguments, little tiffs, I wouldn't say arguments, but Neil would, you know, keep me keep me right. If it came off me, I was a bit sluggish. He'd make sure that, it, you know, I, I'd... Um, I'd, I'd get, you know, I'd improve on that in the second half and things like this. And I think you need that. And, you know, there was ne never any animosity. Uh, it was all, uh, it worked ever so well. And it, it was a marvellous team that Martin had put together. It really was. You know, we, as you know, we got to the, um, the UEFA Cup final 2003. Um, you know, incredible, incredible really to get there, to beat the teams that we beat. Um, yeah. you, you needed that type of player. At times, you know, to um, that type of players, you know, to go down to Blackburn and to go away to Liverpool and to beat the teams, you know, that we'd already beaten in the Champions League as well. Uh, yeah. Magnificent side. I could go through every single player. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and wax lyrical over them. Do you know? <laughs> Shall we get on to number four? John? We'll go on number four, yeah. On you go, John. Well, number four was um, my 100th goal for the club. Ah. It was at um, the old. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was at. It was at Falkirk. Um, it was at Falkirk. I played at the old. Is it Brockville? Brockville. I brought four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for Luton. Um, sort <laughs> of many moons ago, twenty-five years ago, I played against a centre half called Joe McLaughlin. Ah, no, Joe. Uh, yeah, yeah. He also played for Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah, uh, yeah. And I was only about sixteen, seventeen. David played, brought me up to Scotland to. To be a part of the first team uh, training and all that at Luton, I was impressing at 16, 17, just a kid. And he put me on against Big Joe McLaughlin at the old uh, Brockville. So um, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, uh, we won the game, I think we won it 3 0 or maybe 3 1. Uh, Aidan McGady made it for me. I remember celebrating uh, and thinking to myself, well, that's, that's 100 goals, you know, and from day one, to get my first goal against Dundee United. And then obviously four or five years later, I I missed the season because of two back operations as well. So I got them hundred goals in, in basically four seasons. Four seasons I, yeah. I suffered with my back um, with, with the double operation that I'd had. Very, very grateful and thankful of being able to play again because um, they were two major operations that I had. So to come back, um, you know, uh, it, it, this was before my operation. I got the goal. Um, so to score 100 goals is, is very special. As you said earlier on, it's only 30 players to do it. And I think um, that 100 goals mark, there's, there's plenty of great Celtic players that have worn the hoops down the years that have not quite hit 100. Doesn't mean almost that, that much to some people, I would imagine. But to me, it meant everything because I think if you get 100 goals, one, you've got to stay at a football club for at least three or four years. Unless you're Henrik, you might do it in two. But uh, <laughs> you've, you've got to stay for three or four years. I think Kyogo will be the next one to do it. I congratulate James E. Forrest and obviously Lee Griffiths before before uh, James. And then I think he was... Yeah, some of the greats. Um, so that was something really special to me, and uh, and obviously even now what I think of of the goals. Um, it's nice to be called on stage, you know, John Hartson, 110 goals. What you said, 109, but it's 110 actually. Is it 110? Uh, is it? Okay, I think it was. Yeah. I one in. So, I've <laughs> <I'm laughs> taken one off. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah no, I keep getting uh, many goals to John Hartson's goal for seven. Yeah. The first thing he caught was 109. Okay. I won't hold it against you. You're okay. Well, I stand corrected. 110 goals John Hartson got for Celtic, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. 
Um, yeah, so as I said, it was um, it was something I'm very proud of. You know, nobody will ever be able to take them goals away from me. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's number four. Actually, even though that. I even though I tried, John, I tried to take one off you. <laughs> But but the thing about that list, John, that list of thirty players, some of the illustrious names that are on that list, as you mm-hmm. said, and and you're you're keeping esteemed company in the history of this wonderful football club, and you look down that list, you know, Jimmy McGrory, uh, Kenny Dalglish, you know, yeah. Bobby Murdoch, Bobby Lennox, Charlie Nicholas, Brian McClare, you know, and then at some point you see your own name. I mean, there's some real legends there uh, attached to that list, isn't there, John? And you named a couple of latter ones, Elliot Lee and uh, James Forrest as well. So it shows you how hard it is to do something like that because you see you have to stay at least three or four years at a football club. And yeah. nowadays it's not not too common. Players maybe stay two or three years tops and then they're away again. So as you say, it might not mean much to other people, but certainly means a lot to yourself. But I think most Celtic fans, it means a lot to them as well to see a popular player like yourself on that list. And as a striker, someone who they they doff their cap to, so you gave their all for the club and deserves to be on that list. Yeah, well, as I said, um, I, I don't think I was ever a great player. I, I was probably <laughs> a fantastic goal scorer in the right place at the right time. But when you mentioned great... There are great names on that list. I would never go down as a Jimmy Johnson. I would never go down as a Henry Larson or a Kenny Daglish, and rightly so. Um, but adding my name to that 100 goals list tells you something else about me, tells you that I could score goals. Um, I think four out of the five seasons I was there, I got over 20 goals in them four years. So... Um, you know, as I said, it's very special to me, you know, wherever I go on holiday, wherever I I can't go anywhere without bumping into a Celtic fan. You know, <laughs> whether it's the States, whether it's, you know, uh, I've been over to Bermuda a couple of times and my wife is beautiful over there. Whether it's a, a caravan in, in South Wales, you know, <laughs> everywhere I go, there's a Celtic fan. Uh, and I so bet the conversation, that. John, is I remember that goal you scored against back then or whenever they'll, they'll pick a particular moment or a goal, won't they? So it's not the worst thing to be remembered for at all, is it? No, absolutely not. And as I said, um, in terms of we're talking about my five special moments that happened at Celtic, I could name 20. But I'm yeah. just looking for my top five. And uh, certainly I'm, I'm very humble and very grateful that I got the opportunity to, to play for Celtic. If it wasn't for Martin O'Neill, I wouldn't have been a Celtic player. Uh, Martin was very brave in giving me the opportunity after I'd, after I'd um, failed four medicals prior to coming to Celtic because of my knee. But I ended up playing 224 times for Celtic. Um, never once put a packet of ice on my knee. So, you know, the belief and the, um, and, and the, the faith that Martin put in me to deliver, you know, means an awful lot to me. Um, so you know you have to thank that man as well for giving me the opportunity to, to you know to to, uh, to play for Celtic. Can I ask you when that happened? Was there a determination within you to repay that faith? Because I can imagine uh, failing four medicals was pretty soul destroying, John, and people more or less saying to you, "You could be done here," kind mm. of thing, you know. But it just takes one person to say, "Nah." And Martin said that, didn't he? he said he didn't care. He was still yeah. going to still going to sign you, and as you say, that that's all you need, isn't it? As a footballer, that's all you need, all well, you want, really. You just need someone's backing. It's 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 the same in any walk of life. You you need a break. Everybody yeah. needs a, a bit of luck along the way. You know, I'm a huge believer in that. Some stage in life, somebody has to give you an opportunity, whether that's a young player, whether it's a senior professional, whether it's a um, whether it's in management, whether it's in coaching, somebody has to look at you, believe in you and say, do you know what? I'd like you to come with me. I believe in you. I'd like to give you this opportunity. It's all about um, having that sort of chance in life, really. And at 26 years of age, I'd failed four medicals. The famous one, of course, as you all know, was the medical I failed at Child and Athletic. Um, <laughs> 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 
they failed obviously at Rangers, Charlton, Spurs, and Coventry first time round, and then obviously to think twenty six, am I ever going to pass a medical? You know, I'd had a small little arthroscopy operation on my knee. I was doing everything that I needed to do in in training. I was, you know, I was striking the ball well. I was playing, getting involved in the games, um, and um, it was Martin that that actually phoned me up. Literally, I was finishing pre-season at uh, St Andrews with Gordon Strachan with Coventry, and Gordon came to the back of the bus and handed me his phone and said, "Somebody here to speak to you," and it was Martin. And he said, um, "He said, look, John. He said, I, I'm, I'm home for a couple of days. I'm back in Scotland for a couple of days. He said next week, and I'll be coming up to St Andrews, and you will sign this contract." <laughs> 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 I didn't have a choice. But, um, <laughs> I was delighted, obviously, when it happened wow. to join such a uh, a huge club. I played for big clubs in Arsenal and West Ham, but the the, the velocity and the you know the volume of fans that Celtic have, uh, global, globally supported and uh, incredible. So, you know, as much as the, the supporters say to me, thank you for all what you did for Celtic. Obviously, this is an opportunity for me to thank everybody for their support they gave me, not just on the pitch, but of course when I went through my cancer battle as well. You know, it was um, it was overwhelming the amount of support that I, I received. Yeah, you sign that contract, John. You don't realise at the time, but it becomes a life changing event for yourself, doesn't it? Well, it was. It was because, as I said, it was uh, it was a relief as well. It was a relief. Because I'd, I'd spent, you know, quite a bit of time going through these medicals, getting myself ready mentally, and then to be, you know, to get a three million pound contract put in your face and then pulled <laughs> away right at the, the last second, it was uh, ir- irrelevant of the money. Um, I just yeah. wanted to get back playing and to prove to people that I wasn't finished, you know. And I, 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 I played until I was just just thirty two, and um, you know, Celtic gave me that opportunity to prove to people. That I could still play, I could still score goals, um, and uh, you know, as I said, it was Martin O'Neill. It, it was quite funny because I remember I was at a function with Martin a few months ago, and um, I said on stage, they gave me the mic, and I said, if it wasn't for this man, I said I would never have been sat here, I would never have had the opportunity to to play for Celtic. And Martin grabbed the mic off me. He said, John. If it wasn't for you, he said, we wouldn't have got to the UEFA Cup final. So I thought, you know, what, what an amazing thing to say, you know, what a comeback. And I was just, I basically just laughed it off, you know. But um, I don't think Martin sort of, uh, I think he meant it, you know, he meant it and he meant it as real, yes. basically, you know. And uh, it was a lovely response from him because I didn't, I didn't expect it. But um, that's exactly what he said. Lots of truth in it, though, John, is or not, when you look back? Well, the goal in Vigo, which um, which is actually in my list, I think we'd probably talk about it. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll leave that. We lost yeah, then. The game, my goal yeah. took us through. I think first yeah. time in twenty years, I think Celtic have been past gone into Europe past Christmas. You know, twenty years, which is far too long for the club like Celtic. Yeah. And as I said, that goal, you know, somebody else used to shove their backside into. Yeah, the great Kenny Douglas. I got away with one. I didn't get away with many because we <laughs> yeah. weren't too uh, too favourable of uh, of the physical side, and particularly when you play in Europe, they blow up for any sort of little yeah. push or shove or using your body, which I like to do quite a lot. But that particular night in Vigo, it was um, looking back at it, it could have possibly been a foul. The referee might have not give it. He let it go, and obviously the goal. And then, and then we go through. We go through on on the away goal, course, which, yeah. which was a, which was incredibly a vital goal. So that brings us on to number three, John. Yeah, number three. Um, strangely enough, people might think it's number one, but number three was the Liverpool goal. Oh wow! Yeah, number three is the Liverpool, probably the the, the best in terms of. I've probably scored better goals. But in terms of the moment, in terms of the actual size of the game, the quarter final of the UEFA Cup, we have to score, go down to Anfield, unbelievable support behind the goal, incredible night at Anfield, where I, I'd visited many times because 
I was a Liverpool fan, Ian Rush fan growing up in, in my early days yeah. because of the Welsh stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Welsh, he was a... He was the top Welsh goal scorer ever of all time, and then Gareth Bale comes along and then beats the <laughs> um, So I supported Liverpool as a child. I still have a soft spot for them. Um, now we've, you know, and uh, to do it against against Liverpool, don't lose many under the lights at Anfield. You know, historically an unbelievable European football club. Um, and to do it on that night with my, my parents behind the goal. Yeah. And uh, I missed a penalty five days prior to that. So I wasn't feeling in, in the grid, you know, mental sort of against Rangers in the League Cup final. Um, so to have done that and scored that type of goal and to wrap the game up at 2-0, um, because he was, he, was, he was on a bit of a knife edge with about 75 minutes to go. Um, to make it 2-0 and to hit that type of goal was 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 uh, a brilliant moment for everybody. Um, so, yeah, it, it was just... My, my mother doesn't come to many games um, now. I didn't use to towards the end of my career. My father watched me every single game. My dad used to come and watch me. But we've got family in, um, in North Wales, in Bangor. And my mother and father made it up a couple of days before to go visit the family and... I got my parents two tickets for the away end behind the goal. And um, my, my mother says to me, even now, she says, John, if the net hadn't been there, I'd have caught the ball. <laughs> you know, which is ironic, really. They were right behind that that strike, which was... Um, and everybody, I think, I think everybody... I didn't think... Chris Sutton didn't play that night, but Chris we was didn't. on the phone. I can remember being on the bus... And he was on the phone. He said, "Unbelievable strike, great goal!" Everybody was congratulating me, and it, you know, it was it was um, it was a wonderful moment because it took us into the semi final. Yeah, yeah. Of the UEFA Cup, when eventually we got through Boa Vista, um, and then unfortunately I missed the final. But uh, the Liverpool goal is number three. You know, it, it really is. He was brilliant. I could have put it at number one, but um, yeah, the two others I think he'd appreciate. Oh. You know, even, even uh, as much as the Liverpool goal. We've spoken about that before, John, and you gave me a brilliant interview about the the legendary Martin O'Neill team talk at Anfield, which you said just was sensational when he he went around the dressing room and he said, this guy will dig you out a hole when you need him. Can you turn to him and say the same? You say the same. We may as well not turn up. Nobody beats Liverpool at Anfield. Nobody's giving you a shot at, you know, show them how good a team you are and you said that you guys were ready just to come out the blocks there and and beat Liverpool and you know just a a, a brilliant insight into the the mind of of the Celtic manager at that time. I mean, all all managers have kind of their moments and have the stirring team talks, but that Anfield one's kind of gone into folklore, hasn't it? Because it was just the moment where that team came together and as you say, put them into the semi final of the UEFA Cup with a team who. Possibly deserved to win a European trophy, but just fell short. Yeah, it was a great team. It was, it was, it was a wonderful night. And just going back to that, Martin in general. Martin would never tell you to do anything that he didn't think that you could do. Never tell you something that um, that he didn't think he could do, and he knew that you couldn't do. So for me personally, I had to, I had to be strong. I had to hold the ball up. I had to keep the ball. Um, I had to win my headers. I had to bring other people into play. And that was my game. Now, Martin and Neil never used to say to me, John, I want you to, when Didier Gat or Alan Thompson got the ball, I want you to run 50 yards in behind. <laughs> One, I couldn't do it. Two, he knew I couldn't do it. And three, he would never ask me to do it. Now, he would tell Henry Glasson what to do in terms of um, get across the near post. Uh, make terrific runs, run along the back line, dart in behind, time your runs to perfection. Did it every week. Alan Thompson, he would say, just get that left foot, whip that ball in like the old John Robertson, our coach, his old uh, teammate at Nottingham Forest. Sati, he would say, get that barrel chest of yours, hold it up, be strong, get on the back post, terrific head with the ball. 
And for people like at the back, he would just say, don't ever give Bobo Baldi the ball. <laughs> you know, because he, he, he wasn't so great with his feet, but he was brilliant in the air. Yeah. He was very physical. <laughs> now give the ball to Stan Varga, who can ping it 60 yards with both feet. You are me, I'll be just defend some. Do what you do, throw your head in, just defend. So that was Martin's strength. He, he never expected you to do anything. And that particular night, we needed to score. We yeah. needed to score a goal, otherwise we were out. Because they got the away goal, Emil Heskey at, at Celtic Park a week before. And Henrik uh, had scored, obviously, our goal. Um, so we turn up at Liverpool, no matter what happens on the night, we have to score. <laughs> yeah. You know, if we don't score, we're out. You know, they, Liverpool go through. So obviously, Tomo tells you that he meant it um, under the under <laughs> the this kick, to be honest. But um, Tomo sort of thinks differently. But it's a great strike and right on half time as well, which have knocked the wind out of Liverpool. That is the worst time to concede a goal. But then. If you're the team that's scoring it, it's the best time, especially yeah. away from home. Totally changes the mood in the dressing room, changes the manager's team talk for the second half, changes everything. It was the 45 minutes plus seconds added on, and Tom O'Rattles that one in the bottom corner. So we won it up. We've given ourselves a chance. That's all we've done. We've given ourselves a chance. We knew, we knew that Liverpool would come out you know, like like a wounded animal in the second half. They've got pride. They don't want to go out to Celtic at home. Um, and it was nip and tuck. They had chances. We had a couple of chances. And then obviously in the 70 something minute, I smashed in the second goal, which gave everybody a relief. You know, mm. the fans behind the goal, all the Celtic fans around the world back in Glasgow. And of course, you could see Martin's reaction when he jumped up. We'd, we'd won at <laughs> Liverpool. We'd won at Liverpool. 2 0. We proved to everybody down south in England, the Premier League, all the other teams, we had proved that we were a superb team. We were clapped off that night by the Liverpool fans. They were, their appreciation for uh, Celtic's performance that evening at Anfield. So we had proved, not that, not that we, we never felt we had to prove anything because we knew yeah. how good we were as a team. Do you know, we knew when things Things ticked. We knew we could beat any team in the land, and I mean any team. Um, so that particular night was a wonderful night, wonderful night for Celtic Football Club. The fans must have been so proud. They've gone down to a giant, a giant that Liverpool Football Club is, um, and obviously um, turned them over the way we did. Fantastic. And as nights go, John, you see your your mother and father are there, and oh, the mother, doesn't doesn't get too many games, and you know the emotion behind yeah. that. So yeah. it is one of, it's one of those Carol's Bird nights, isn't it, for yourself? Oh, it was brilliant! It you was know, great. they were on the uh, phone to me uh, after the game. You know, so <laughs> fantastic, yeah, great moment. And ones that send kind of shivers down your spine, and you know, you just yeah. you never tire of talking about it, do you? And yeah. I, yeah. every time I see you, I, I see you running away like that. I know. know. The, to the fans at Anfield, it's just just pictures that are ingrained in your mind, isn't it? Well, you know? I don't know where it come from, Tom. Yeah, <laughs> because only my goals were in the six yard box, uh, you know, yeah. heading, attacking the ball. I had good feet for say a yeah. big man, if you like, you know, um, I could play on the edge of the box. I could play. I could put players in. I like to get involved in the play in general. I wasn't just somebody that peeled away onto people defenders' shoulders and headed it and, you know, um, I enjoyed to get involved. We played lots of five-a-side. I still love the five-a-sides and improve on your feet type of thing, you yeah. know. Um, so, you know, to score there from about 30 yards, whatever <laughs> it was, um, two goalkeepers wouldn't have stopped it. So. No, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't even know Ian Rush scored a better one at Anfield and he's, and he's popping ceremony, to be honest, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you say, just everything, every box ticked there, I think, in that moment, Johnny. Oh, definitely, definitely. Well, that's number three. I mean, I actually thought that'd be your number one, but there you go, shows you how much I know. Number two, John? Well, number two, again, could be number one. Um, number two is the goal at Santa Vigo. Yeah. Because um, the importance of it... Uh, mm -hmm. We went on to compete in the UEFA Cup final. 
that particular year, 2003. Um, again, I think I think we were were we one one from the first game or one nil down. I'm not sure. You uh, were one nil up, I think, John, weren't you? One nil up. So was it Henry uh, Pallancy? I'm sure yes, it was. I think so. Yes. Yeah. And then obviously, um, sorry, yeah, we were one nil up, and then we go to Vigo. I put us. Uh, I think they go in front. The goal then that equalised Chris Sutton with a great header. I fended the defender off. I've almost rolled him and smashed it in the bottom corner. I run off. I saw a Welsh flag. In the <laughs> um, I run off to the Welsh flag where the Sutton supporters are all cramped in this this little bit of the the, the support of the stadium. And I ran away, pointing my finger. It was, uh, uh, I was delighted to score that type of goal again. Um, and then I think they got a winner. Um, yeah, yeah. A winner. They went two one, but obviously because we were one 0 at the away goal, that away goal um, has proved to be the biggest goal probably in, in the last I don't know how many years. Because mm-hmm. um, without. without that goal, we, we go out. Um, yeah. So in terms of its importance, and I often get asked, "What's the best goal?" and the, uh, I always go back to the Vigo goal because in terms of uh, what it meant financially as well. Um, and, and obviously we got to the UEFA Cup final that year in Seville. Um, uh, that, that's no doubt one of the most important special nights in the history uh, in the last 30, 40 years because of the meaning of it, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the meaning of it. Um and I think a lot of Celtic supporters I've spoken to and done functions over the years pretty much say the same. They say, yeah, that Vigo goal was was huge. Uh, and then we've continued to, you know, progress and get on in Europe. Yeah, the results could be better. Um, I think that's something that Brendan is wanting to improve this season back in the Champions League. Can, can we progress? Can we get to the, the group stages, you know, the knockout stages? Um that is something I think that um, that the manager's trying to add and bring with quality and signings and you know he knows what you need to get to that level. Um, but yeah, that that is number two, and I have no doubt in saying that that um, that stands up there. The Liverpool goal was brilliant. We've explained the yeah. reason why, but in terms of the Vigo goal, it was uh, you know we all know what it meant. And you mentioned just prior to talking about that the Vigo goals on the list about a player who used his his core, let's say his body well, yeah. and it was it was vintage Ken Roglic. I saw that goal and thought that's Ken Roglic, Celtic yeah. Liverpool legend. You know the, the way you kind of used your frame. You said you know some referees would give it, some wouldn't, but you got the benefit that night. And can Kenny made a career out of doing that, shielding the ball that way and using that part of you, your anatomy and, and then banging it in the net, you know, so I I loved the goal for that very reason as well, John, because it was so reminiscent yeah. of a childhood. I think as well. Know, hero of mine as well, you know, so. Yeah, I think as well, Tony, I think when Kenny was doing it in the in the 80s and early 90s, late 70s, you could get away with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but what the problem is now is that the referees are so... Um, they, they, they're almost trying to take the physicality of the game. You know, yeah. they, you, you cannot. And, and there's nothing there's nothing better as a supporter to see two midfield players for 90 minutes going at it. Oh, yeah. Going at it. Tackles flying in. Fairly, tackles flying in, getting up. You know, um, it's brilliant. It's, it's part of the game. And I think yeah. now that the VAR and decisions, and it's almost taken a huge part of the game away, the physicality. Um, I was very physical. Um, I used my body to, to, to my strength. Managers paid record money for me because of my physicality. Yeah. Um, and that, that's why they bought me. That's why they paid record money for me, to use that elements I've got as a footballer. But, but nowadays, um, and I, I would, that's why I mentioned I was surprised that the referee didn't blow. We had a really good slice of luck that night. Because yeah. when Dalglish used to do it, then you could get away with certain things. You could get away with the odd push or the shove or the, the backside, and you know, and to help you sort of manoeuvre the ball or 
uh, maneuver the situation, if you like. Um, so yeah, I certainly got away with one, but I, I, I'd been flagged up for many before that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I think, it, um, yeah, exactly. In the end, they say it balances itself out, <laughs> doesn't it? It's not always yeah. the case, sure but say. Yeah. certainly that night, you know. But it was one of those great nights because Celtic withstood everything that Celtic Vigo had to throw them, and Celtic Vigo were a were a good side. And that's when you thought to yourself, Celtic are a good side too. You never ever doubted that. But that was a real test of your metal. And you, you, I know it was early in the competition, but you are starting to think, can they go a long way here? You know, can they, can they get to the latter stages? Can they win it? Type thing. You know. That's right. Well, you know, you're looking at you're looking at maybe did we play. Um, you're looking at maybe two, two uh, Premier League teams to come. Yeah. You know, potentially, we're all looking at potential draws and who could we possibly draw. And I think Blackburn um, Blackburn came before, in between Vigo and Liverpool, I'm sure yeah. they did. So we went down to Blackburn and produced an unbelievable performance down there. And then obviously the Liverpool two, over two yeah. legs as well. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I think I think we proved we were a proper team, a team to be reckoned with. Now, before we get to number one, it would be remiss of me not to ask you and on behalf of the supporters, and you've probably spoken about this before, but what was it like playing up front beside the King of Kings? I mean, I know you could wax lyrical for the next 40 minutes about him, but yeah, I mean, he is a phenomenon. You you joked about the fact that he, he would have scored 100 goals in two seasons, stuff like that, but he was an unbelievable footballer for Celtic and you know, 242 goals in 315 games, John, it's... It's yeah. an exceptional goal scoring record. Isn't well, it? well I, I played with Henrik for three seasons. And, uh, <laughs> he was, um, his movement was terrific. Uh, you know, he, technically, he was outstanding. Technically, he scored, he could score any type of goal. Yeah. He was brilliant in the air. Not, not the tallest, about five foot 10, five foot 11. But he used to play in that position from corners four. Just the inside, just the near post, the front post, he'd be about three yards just off the front post. And he had such a great leap. He, he could, you know, he was five foot 11, he could jump nine feet. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> springs in his feet. Um, and on either side, he would take up that near post position. So you had Alan Thompson, who was great delivery yeah. from the right. And then you had Stylian Petrov. And they whipped the balls in, in swingers. And how many times Henry just got up and just went bang in the near post? It, it, it's just, you look at his goals. Um, yeah. He did it so many times, and clubs, teams tried to stop it, just couldn't stop it. He was quick, he could run in behind. Um, he got hold of the ball, he could hold the ball up, no problem at all. He was strong, he was brave. He Look at some of the goals he scored, diving headers and things like that putting his head in where the, the boots are flying, if you like. And he was a very humble man. Henrik would um, never really spoke about himself. And I've just got on with it, a very, you know, a team player. Yeah. You know, the team always came first. Um, and um, as I said, I think with Henrik, one of his strengths for me was um, he gave everything right up until the end, right up until he left Celtic. And he'd, he'd be the same for 90 minutes. He, w- he wouldn't just score a hat-trick, say, in the 84th minute he'd scored his third goal. That that wasn't enough. He'd be chasing the goalkeeper down <laughs> like with all his might in the 94th minute. And I'd be strolling about 50 yards away. We're falling <laughs> up. I've done my bit. I've scored my goal. <laughs> Henrik was just relentless. That's the word. Yeah, and he's a credit to himself and and his career, and obviously, other people should look at him. You know, other people, other strikers, should look at the way he played. Uh, I know there's only one, there's only one king, there's only one Henrik, and they don't come around. They don't, you know, they don't come around too often. But look at other. I know we're all different. We've all got different body types. We're all different athletes. We're all different. You know. But if you look at him and, and, and you know, and, and realised the hard work he put in and uh, the way he went about the game, um, he wanted more. He was never satisfied with, he wanted more and more and more. And if he could score five rather than four, 
he made sure he scored five. You know, we have 242 <laughs> goals in 315 games. It's yeah. freakish. Really, yeah. really, it's freakish um, to score that amount of goals. But, you know, it wasn't just in the Scottish, the SPL at the time, Scottish Premier yeah. League. It was, did it in Europe. You know, he's the record goal scorer in Europe. He's, you know, he, he did it in the cup games. He did it in the finals. He scored two unbelievable goals in the UEFA Cup final. Yeah. You know, the second goal, it, it's... How do you get better than from there? Uh, he just did remarkable things that, that yeah, yeah. you have to look and almost pinch yourself. So to play with him, to play alongside him, for him to be relying on me to put him in and to make opportunities and win my headers and he's he's running off my flick-ons and things like this, um, you know, was, was very special for me. You know, and I played with some great players. You know, I played with Giggs, I played with Rush, I played with Hughes, I played with Bergkamp and... Right, and all, all these great players, and uh, Henrik was uh, he was a phenomenon, yeah. I, I've all, always said, John, it was just the sheer unbridled joy he brought to that Celtic team with mm. with his goals, you know, and just the, the, the loving was sensational, wasn't it? Henrik was great for Celtic, but Celtic were great for Henrik as well, and, and it showed that because he did stay seven years and. As you say, you couldn't get him on a programme like this because he wouldn't be able to pick five moments. <laughs> he's, he's got 242 of them, hasn't he, for a start? You know? Yeah, so you need a three hour show, Tom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just try to get a hold of him. That would be a feat in itself. But there you go. That is my dream. That's my dream to get him on something like this. But hey, there you go. But now, thanks for that, John. But hey, big trumpet fan for you now. Number one, John Hartson's number one. Well, number one, moments number one for me, yeah. my best moment um, that outlives them all is the my first league trophy at Celtic 2001. I joined the club and um, I had to get into the team. Uh, that was my first thing. I had to get into this incredible team. I had to break up that partnership somehow. <laughs> that, that that partnership that had won, not break it up, but get involved in it, if you like, yeah. that's a better word. Um, I managed to get in and I never came out. You know, that was my biggest sort of achievement. And we won the league in 2001, the year I joined. And uh, the joy and, and the moment in itself of winning the league, the last game of the season, we were home to Livingston. Henrik scored three, I got two. Um, we won five nil, and um, enjoying the trophy lift, enjoying the the fans throwing the scarves at us. My kids come on the pitch, my family. We're walking around celebrating. We've won the league, my first ever league title as a player. Um, the, the nothing, nothing will ever beat that. You know the the radio stations were on interviewing players. The families are there. My little daughter's got a Celtic scarf around her. <laughs> you know, five six years of age. My boy's two, um, and that that's the moment for me. That's my number one. Um, that was my best ever, my best ever sort of um, moment at Celtic. That 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 first year lifting the league title. Um, the team was brilliant. I'd managed to get 25 goals that season in a team that included Larson and Sutton. Um, and nothing nothing ever comes close to that, in my view. Do you know, I lifted the trophy. It's a, it's a team game, we, you know. Um, and uh, as I said, that, that has to be my number one for those reasons. I remember that game, John. I think you were 4-0 up in jig time, weren't you? Certainly. Uh, I think against so, Livingston, yeah. he was phoning up certainly at half time, I believe. Yeah, something like that. that. Yes, yeah. it was a brilliant performance. I remember yeah. Stevie Duffy hung one up for me, and I came in over the back of the full back and I headed the ball into the roof of the net. Henry got two, I think, up until half time. He, he ended it, he ended with a hat trick. Um, and for Martin O'Neill to have put the faith in me and for me to have delivered uh, that particular first year, come back with the title, then goals. Got myself into the team. I was fit. I felt strong. I was 27 years of age. All the doubts about my knee um, had just gone, gone over my head. Um, so yeah, bar none, that that was that was the best moment. And I, I, you can mention the Vigo goal, the importance, the Liverpool goal from a personal point of view, the hundred goals, but that one winning that title that year, my first year. 
um, was just gave me so much joy. You also scored, was it nine goals against Rangers, John? Is that right? Yeah, I don't like talking about myself, Tom. But... <laughs> <laughs> we, we've seen it as about you. I'll, I'll try and get this right. Is it nine? I think against... so. I, I, got, I, got, I scored um, in four consecutive derbies. Yes. Four consecutive mm-hmm. games I scored yeah. in. And I was going for the fifth, believe it or not, but Martin O'Neill took me off. Because I, was, I wasn't a team player. I was shooting from everywhere. <laughs> the record must have meant something to me. But uh, no, I had a very good period against our rivals across the road. Um, I had a very good period. Good time scoring goals. And I think when you score the winner against your biggest rivals, I think all around the world you celebrate the fans. and, and You've got the bragging rights until they come around again. So I, I knew what that goal meant. I'd been to Swansea Cardiff games many times down the years as a young supporter living in Swansea. So Derby games, I know what they mean. I know what they mean to the supporters. And they are for supporters, them games. Of They're not for us. They're not for players. As everybody feels it around the club. Yeah. The key lady, the kit man, you know, the, the girl on the door, the, the guys on the reception. When you when you beat your biggest rivals, everybody feels it. Everybody celebrates and and obviously gets on the back of it, and it's vice versa when you lose. You don't want to get your head off that, up from that pillow <laughs> in the morning. You'd rather stay in bed. You don't, want to, you don't want to face anybody. You know, if you're going to a petrol station, going to be cars flying past, giving you all sorts of verbals. And, well, that's part of it, you know. Um, but no, I, I had a good time against Rangers. We scored quite a few goals against them. So that adds to everything else, that adds to the enjoyment. If I could ask you, John, how would you sum up your time at Celtic? What, I'd what say magical. Mean? I'd yeah. say magical, magical, blessed. Um, very lucky, very lucky man. You know, um, just spent five years at, at, at the club. I live in I live in Scotland now. I live in Edinburgh. We live up the road, um, <clears throat> and um, I popped into Glasgow quite a bit. I still do a little bit of work. I did Celtic TV last week for the opening game against Ross County. Still get called in now and again to do bits and bobs. But um, no, I'm happy to own. I'm in a great place. I'm not at a bet. I'm 12 and a half years now abstinence, which keeps my head really clear. Um, and I got a beautiful wife, you know, five fantastic children. I'm enjoying life. I'm healthy, which is the main thing. And I dip my toe in now and again. And uh, I, I enjoy the radio show that I do go radio once yeah. a week. I get still get across all what's happening in Scottish football, and there's always something to talk about, whether it's, <laughs> whether it's VAR or yeah, yeah, whether it's you know something else. Um, so yeah, I'm in a good place, and uh, I've enjoyed this interview. It's been good. And guys, let me annoy you, John. Every now and again, uh, yeah, you never know. You never know. <laughs> ah, you're too kind. You're too kind. And I think, on behalf of Celtic supporters, I think the privilege was ours watching you, John. And especially in that team and watching those 110 goals. That's I'll right. Say, get I'll say it again. 110 um, goals John Hartson yeah. scored for Celtic. Brilliant. Slapping the wrist for your old guy <laughs> here. But there you go. And I think everybody will agree, John. That's that's brilliant. I can't thank you enough for coming on and talking us through your no five problem. Celtic moments that made me. And if you've enjoyed it, as you see along the ticker tape at the bottom, subscribe to the Celtic Way website and help. Support top quality football journalism covering the club you love. Click that button, guys. www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. All that's left for me to say is, John Hartson, that's been your five Celtic moments that made you. Thank you so much. The privilege has been all mine. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much.